Good morning. It's Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Learning to Use Good Judgment. And our scripture comes from Romans chapter 7 and also Proverbs chapter 9. Paul writes, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. And then Solomon writes in Proverbs 9, Leave your simple ways behind and begin to live. Learn to use good judgment. If you've ever had a wood splinter in your finger, you know it'll nag you with a painful reminder every time you grip something. If you've ever had a paper cut, you understand you're going to manage to rub it the wrong way at least 28 times a day. And if you've ever read what Paul wrote about doing stupid stuff while failing to do smart stuff, you're well on your way to comprehending why the whole idea of wisdom is not to cram your head full of thoughts, good, bad, or trivial. It's all about being able to live in a way that makes sense in three ways. First is the ability to be in right relationship with your Creator. Second is the pathway to being in right relationship with your community. And thirdly is the pathway to being at rest, having peace within your own heart. The Apostle Paul had a hard driving way about him. He was a type A, the kind of type A that made obsessive compulsive people look like slugs. He had to get clobbered on the Damascus Road with a spiritual two-by-four to wake up to the fact that his wisdom was nothing but a splinter of foolishness driving him into the ground. Paul knew this every day like a paper cut. It nagged him, but he couldn't shake living like that. And then he met Jesus, and things began to change. His so-called wisdom began to show itself what it really was, pride masquerading as being right. He not only had to rethink his behavior, but everything about his life. It took a long time to sink in, according to Galatians 1 and 2, about 14 years in all, but he finally learned how to submit his life to godly control. And with that came wisdom for really living. The Apostle Peter had much the same problem, but with a different pedigree. Peter was not an astute rubber of elbows with the higher-ups like Paul was. Peter was a common, uneducated fisherman. But he occupied a big space, having been on the so-called inner circle with Jesus and a chief leader of the early church. Peter's impetuous roller coaster life of being hero one moment and coward the next made him a perfect pastor. By the time he figured out his selfish, prideful ways were destroying whatever manhood God had given him, and he was making a mess of his life in witness, Peter had grown to know how to counsel the rest of us who would come behind. Peter had walked with Christ, denied him three times, and been forgiven. That was a taste of the divine. And Peter had learned to cling to God's ways over his own way of crashing through life like a bull in a china shop. Peter's advice to us is born of his own testimony of what real living is all about. 1 Peter chapter 2. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babes, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you'll grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you've had a taste of the Lord's kindness. For you today, if you've been driven with trying to do better, do more, get more, and experience everything, you're in a place where Peter and Paul called home. Solomon also tried to live life on his own terms. Maybe it's time to heed what these wise men had to learn the hard way. Wisdom is hard to come by, but when you give in to God's way, good judgment is on the way. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.